Biotechnology is a disruptive force that also uses what already exists in nature in order to create new products and new technologies. One early example of biotechnology is penicillin, which was derived from a mold and used to make an antibiotic that eventually saved over 100 million lives. Now biotechnology is being used to address one of the biggest problems in our society today, which is the environmental impact of carbon emissions. The aviation industry is one of the biggest producers of carbon emissions. So for example, a single round trip flight from New York City to San Francisco creates around two to three tons of carbon emissions per passenger. And to put that into perspective, people who do not fly at all only produce around 10 to 19 tons in an entire year. The European Union has recognized the aviation as one of the biggest contributors to a carbon footprint. And therefore in 2011, they proposed legislation that would fine airlines flying out of the EU if they produce carbon emissions over a given threshold. If this goes into effect, it could potentially cost US airlines $3.1 billion by the year 2020. Some people have proposed that biofuels would be a viable alternative to fossil fuels because they burn cleaner and then could be used as jet fuel. However, one of the biggest problems of biofuels today is that they require large amounts of arable land and fresh water resources which are dwindling rapidly. Total agriculture currently already consumes around 70% of the world's fresh water, and biofuel production alone is slated to consume around 8% of available fresh water in the United States by 2030. This isn't a sustainable, sustainable situation because 2.4 billion people on the earth already live in areas where they don't have access to fresh drinking water and the number of people in that situation is only slated to increase. Scientists in Abu Dhabi at the Sustainable Bioenergy Research Consortium in partnership with Boeing, Etihad Airways and Honeywell are trying to find ways to make biofuel without using lots of fresh water or lots of land. They're using a plant called Salaconia, which can actually grow in seawater, but produces oil rich seeds that can be converted into biofuel. In this way, they can make biofuel, biofuels at per acre yield similar to soybeans without consuming large amounts of fresh water or land. And these biofuels still emit 50 to 80% less carbon than conventional fossil fuels. Biotechnology is also being used to feed the world. Genetically modified organisms have increased agricultural income by a whopping $43 billion since their introduction in 1996. And by 2012, biotech crops were valued at around 115 billion, demonstrating the enormous positive impact that biotechnology has had on agriculture. Despite these effects, there still is a public fear of biotechnology in agriculture, particularly pertaining to the transgene transfer of bio from biotech crops to natural crops. Scientists are working to prevent this transgene escape by implementing the genes not into the plant genome itself, but into the genome of chloroplast or plastids, which are organelles within the plant, plant cell. In this way, they can mitigate transgene transfer because plastids are only passed on through the female plant. But they can also express the plant protein or the transgene protein at very high rates, around 10,000 copies per plant cell and are able to comprise around 46% of the plant protein. Biotechnology is also being used to heal the world. Malaria is a disease that affects around 200 million people, killing over half a million people per year. The really unfortunate thing about this statistic is that malaria is a highly treatable disease and the drug used to treat it is very effective. However, the production of this drug requires a natural precursor called wormwood, the supply of which is highly volatile. Scientists at Amaris and Sanofi, supported by funds from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, are working to change this. They found a way to use fast growing bread yeast to produce this precursor without the need for the wormwood plant at all. In this way, in the lab, they produced around 50 to 60 tons of this drug precursor and are slated to supply nearly half of the global demand for malaria drugs by the end of this year. 
By relying on the power of nature, biotechnology will allow us to feed and heal the Earth's growing population, feeds that have previously often seemed unattainable. So what you've seen here are disruptive technologies that we have identified as having real commercial potential. These are not pipe dreams. There are real startups and inventors working on ideas as disruptive as the internet has been in decades past. If any of these technologies have been of particular interest, we'd be happy to chat with you about how we might be able to work to explore some of these technologies. In fact, what you've seen here is a sample of Prescatter's service. Typically, clients provide us with a statement of work. In this particular case, we have broadly looked at nine disruptive technologies. In the second step, our team has a teleconference similar to this webinar, but where we would have interactive discussions with you and your teammates on the findings. And then in the last step, we compile our findings into a report for you and your teammates to disseminate internally.